Hi guys, it's Andy from Man City Fan TV. Um, this video is slightly different to ones that we've done before. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to do is obviously we've got Ray. Ray's on the channel again. Um, but we've invited along uh, somebody called Seri. Um, now, Seri, what I'd like you to do is for the people who are watching this video is just introduce yourself, uh, who you are, who you support, what you do, etc., etc. All right. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Seri from Nigeria. I am a writer, a content creator. I do some coaching as well on the side and some scouting here in our local leagues. But generally, I'm, I do a lot of football writing and um, punditry. So, yeah, that's basically it. So you, you're quite prominent on Twitter, which is where we came across you. Yeah, yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've you you, you it, this one in particular, um, obviously, because you're in Nigeria. Yeah, the Wi-Fi might not be absolutely brilliant. So, if um, just for the viewers, if you don't move around a lot, then it might just come across oh, okay. a bit better. Uh, yeah. But basically, what happened to give you some background to this is um, your uh, Twitter handle is is it Seri D Puchades? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Puchadis is actually a Valencia legend. So um, sometimes I change my name to name of a Valencia legend like every week or every two weeks or something. Just like um, as a way of tribute to some of our legends. So I just okay. add someone's okay. name, maybe Puchadis, Albelda, like that. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. problem. Well, um, you can check it out. We'll put a link below. So if you want to go back after this video and see the tweets and follow where it was and things like that. But this came about a week ago. And basically, you wrote, because obviously you're a Valencia fan, um, yeah. which is happy days for you at the moment. Um, but yeah. it's interesting you were talking about Man City in particular. And your tweet came up and it was retweeted or it came across by somebody who comes on our channel uh, quite a yeah. bit. He called Press Witch Blue, and he, he does a lot of writing. He's a big blue, does a lot of writing for fanzines, and you know he's well respected when he talks about FFP and things like that. So um, mm -hmm. he actually tweeted it, which obviously I saw um, and went through it and thought it was fantastic, and it got a lot of comments from City fans uh, on there. So I'm going to kick off with the first sort of tweet that you made, and it said, "Find out why 1516 City." and 1617 City looked vastly different from 1718 and 1819 City. Find out how they corrected errors that they made in 2012-13 in and 14-15, two seasons when they followed up title wins by going back to mediocrity. Find out what they did differently this time around. Um, so what actually made you write that tweet in the first place? Well, um, for a while, I'd been seeing a lot of, you know, talk about City and everybody was just talking about the fact that they spent money and bought the title and all of that. And I think it's completely rubbish. I think that um, a lot of teams have money, especially in the Premier League, but it's all about how you spend the money and how you plan. That's what makes a team successful. If you check Chelsea's spending, I mean, the, the time um, City spent over 200 million in one window, Chelsea also spent, you know, about the same amount, and I think they finished fifth, while um, Mass still won the league. That was, I think, last season. So um, it, it should tell you that um, spending money is no guarantee of success, especially if you're not spending it properly. I mean, I feel like City weren't spending it particularly well before, they were just, yeah, I mean, of course, naturally, um, considering where City were coming from um, back in 2009, 2008, 2009, when uh, Robinho was signed, um, at the time, the priority was just to get as many big names as possible so that players would be attracted to the team. But as time went by, it, it shouldn't have been like that anymore. It should have been more about plugging holes and fixing problems. And that's what, for instance, um, I, I hate to mention this, but there's Manchester United just across. I mean, we remember how the Sanchez deal went. There was there was a reason why Man City did not go for Sanchez eventually. They pulled out of the deal. Which is a good correctly. point. In one of your paragraphs, you talk about um, planning mm -hmm. and profile names, which we'll come to. Yeah. Hold that for now. 
Um, All right. Can I can I just say there as well? I mean, if you look in the early days of City, when um, uh, after the takeoff, when Mark Hughes was there, yeah. Um, I said he said we we bought a lot of players, and we bought some. We, you could obviously see in the early days some really stupid buys. The Rocky Santa Cruz yeah. buy, for instance, the guy was yeah. injured, and we bought him for about eighteen million quid, and we sold him for three million. We were buying players, just yes. short term. Big names. We got Wayne Bridge for and paid him astronomical sums. So there's a lot of rush to buy big players on big, big contracts that wouldn't leave. And that kind of hamstrung the team uh, a few years later down the line when we just couldn't get rid of players on these huge contracts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you you mentioned those seasons, 15, 16, we finished fourth on 66 yeah. points. 16, 17 season, we finished third on 78 points. And then, obviously, the last two seasons, we've uh, had 100 points, the Centurion season, and then this season, 98. So, two seasons there, sort of averaging 99 points per season, which is, you know, you only have to go back a few years. We're talking 32 points more than it was in, you know, in 15, 16 season. Yeah. Your next point, you said, instead of people to look at how Man City are running their club on the football inside and learn, they are spending all their time being salty. It's a shame because there is so much to learn. Some smart ass is going to reply to this tweet with, yeah, learn how to spend X, Y amount of billion uh, pounds. Um, so do you feel from that, that next tweet you made uh, that um, there is this jealousy, this saltiness towards Manchester City? Of course. Everyone is always um, jealous of success and... Um, if you if you really look at it, the people that have a problem with it wouldn't mind it happening to their own clubs. They wouldn't mind having city success. They wouldn't mind having the ability to spend and spend properly, because you you look across you know and look at Manchester United again and see how much complaints are coming from that side, and you can see that it's more about the planning. They are questioning the planning, the way players are signed, and all of that. And at the same time, I find it very hypocritical that they, in the same breath, they can criticize City for how they are handling their football inside when they would love to be like City in that regard. Well, it's it very well um, in the past few years in, in fixing some issues that they used to have with signing players. I mean, yeah, continue. continue. Um, you're, you're about to say something. Yeah. Okay, I, so it, um, I feel that City have done well so far in, in, in fixing those problems. It's, it's, it's quite interesting because obviously... Can, like, you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, there might be a little bit of break in somewhere because obviously okay. wi fi is. But um, it's interesting, last night the rumour came out that... Uh, a cousin of Sheikh Mansour is uh, looking at buying Newcastle, buying Newcastle United for 350 million. Now, yes, okay. if you follow Twitter and you see some of the YouTube channels, there is one big YouTube Newcastle YouTuber called True Jordy, um, who started off fine for you know comments about City, but over the last sort of six to eight months, he's really changed his tune and he's become very bitter about oil money, <laughs> money being put in, and ironically. His club could exactly. by Jake cousin. Yeah. And you realize that when so when that does happen, when if that eventually happens, he's not going to have a problem with it. So well, it, it just tells you how hypocritical everyone is being about this. Yeah, it's not going to have a problem with it. Once they start winning on the field, once it starts seeing amazing signings he's not going to complain it's but exactly now he's complaining because it's not happening to his club yeah. he's seeing someone else having success he's seeing everyone is scared of manchester city's dominance yeah. everyone but is what, scared and i think they should be scared I, I said it one time that yeah i said it one time that um if you are a fan of any other club in england apart from manchester city and maybe liverpool at this point you should be very worried because first of all as it looks you are going to need 30 wins in a season to even compete for the title. Not good, and that doesn't guarantee you a win, as we have seen with Liverpool. To even compete, you need about 30 wins a season. How many of them think that their clubs can do that in the next two, three, four years? 
So you can understand why they are so bothered by it because they can see that the way it looks, Manchester City don't just look like people who have won the league now. They look like a team that can win the next four or five. I don't think that has happened in the past in terms of probably, okay, let's say the City team of 13-14. They didn't look like a team that would be dominant for the next three years or four years, same as the 11-12 team. But this current team, even from last season, it was very obvious that, okay, this team was going to be a long-term, a dominant team in the long term. And you're looking at the signings, you're looking at um, the young, I mean, a lot of the core, the new core are still young. You have Sterling, who is about 24 or 25. You have um, Sane, hopefully he doesn't leave. Um, you have Jesus, all those players are still young. And the players that are being phased out, their replacements are already in place. Like David Silva getting replaced by, you know, Bernardo. And, of course, KDB is still young enough to give another five, six top years. So, everyone is worried. And um, instead of looking for how to compete, they are bashing. And that, that's the problem generally. People just want to bash. I mean, I'm a Valencia fan. I... I see Barcelona and Real Madrid dominate everything. I've seen that for a long time. But whenever I look at them, I don't get salty that they are winning. I don't get bothered by it. Because for me, priority should be my own team having a model that works. That fits whatever it is that we want to achieve. And, you know, I can, I can draw parallels between Manchester City and Valencia. Because in the past, we were doing things the wrong way. We got a, a, a rich a, a rich billionaire owner and um when he first came he just started splashing the cash and he was just buying anybody but eventually um i think about two three years later something changed in the in the way we were looking at things and then we hired properly we planned the hire properly just like the way manchester city planned for pep we planned the higher we planned everything and we are seeing the results now two consecutive champions in qualifications we just won a cup for the first time in 11 years and that's what i was trying to say you know in, in that thread about teams just learning from a model that works a successful model i mean southampton i use southampton also as an example in that thread because they are an example of a team who had a model when they got pochettino in they um they, they, they had this plan of how they wanted to play and how they wanted to plan their, their transfers and all that. So, Pochettino came in, the, the philosophy was taught all the way down to the youth teams. The signings, it was very obvious what they were trying to do with their signings. They didn't just buy anybody. And, and that's usually the problem with teams who have a lot of money. They buy just anybody because they have the money to spend. But when you're desperate enough and you don't have enough money, that's when you actually are forced to, to plan. So um, I think that um, there's a lot to learn from Manchester City in that regard. And if teams were actually paying attention, it would actually be better. I mean, there's no reason why a team should spend 200 million like Chelsea did and still be struggling, you know, the way they do. There's no reason why Manchester United should be breaking world record fees for players and still be struggling i mean they came sixth that that's just embarrassing and th that's why i think it's very hypocritical for them to be talking about spending when they are spending and they're coming sixth. so it's obvious that spending does not guarantee success a plan is what does a good working here were you um your next sort of tweet on the back of that previous one was uh, you said successful models are emulated by people who were smart especially yeah. when such models are proving to be sustainable and especially when yours isn't working. Look at how Man City's internal structure is. Look at how long they've waited to have their manager and why they wanted him. You then, put, then tweeted, look at what their aim was in hiring him. Look at how they plan their transfer business, how they go for profiles over names, how they order signings according to priority, the kind of signings that they pulled out of and why, and the players whose demands they refuse to give in to. Were you talking about the likes of Sanchez, Fred, Jorginho? Dani Alves as well. Dani Alves. I remember, yeah, you were in for Dani Alves, and I think his, his demands, his weight demands were too high for a position that wasn't really priority at the time. So, of course, 
the, the club pulled out. Sanchez as well was probably going to be um, a way of, you know, strengthening the attack. But as soon as, you know, his demands were ridiculous, the club pulled out, especially considering his age. Sanchez, Dani Alves, it was, it was senseless to offer such astronom astronomical fees for, for, for those kind of players. So I think that that's what changed because previously, Manchester City went for Sanya. Um, I think Sanya was about 30 when Man City went for him. And they gave him his out of Arsenal. But I don't think present day City would do such a thing. I don't think they would go for a Sanya at this point if, if they had the chance. I think they would go for someone younger who could give you know, at least four, five, six years of, you know, pro proper football. So, um, that's that's something that is really, really important. I think um, Manchester Man City changed the way they approached all these kind of things. The kind of players that they went for, the profiles and all of that. I mean, um, if we're being sincere, when um, um, Sterling was signed, everyone laughed at City. Everyone mocked City. How can you pay 50 million for this guy? He's just another overrated English talent. All of a sudden, we're seeing them say, oh, how can we compete? They have Sterling. When City paid for Walker, I saw a lot of people saying Trippier was better than Walker and saying that Walker was just another overrated player. But now that Walker has been really good at City, despite his you know, somewhat shaky form this season, people have been saying, oh, how can we compete? They have Walker. You see how the tune has changed, but that's the, the tune change because um, the change of tune is testament to the work that Pep has done with these players in yeah. developing them. But the club first identified their their strengths and their talents and how they fit in with Pep's philosophy, and I which, feel that that is what every which, club should be doing. Which is what you you basically say in the next one. You talk about. Look at how they ruthlessly replanned their squad, brought down the average age by about five years in within one transfer window. The exit, yeah. the arrivals. Look at how they spend on priority positions and how they yeah. spend positions that aren't. Which is quite interesting, Ray, because we know, and I don't know whether you've got it in front of you, uh, the Caldoun comment about about the system we have. That the interview. I don't. I don't know. Sorry, did you see the interview with Caldoun last night? Last night, no, I didn't see that. But I saw a previous interview with him. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 it was part one of a part of two parts interview about reviewing the season, and uh, it's on. If you go on Man City TV, the official or YouTube, or YouTube yeah. you'll be able to find. Right. It. it was very interesting, Ray. Yeah, he's, he covers a lot of these these points. Caldoun uh, kind of talks about. Um, and now Caldoun said, you know, we're looking at young players. We're looking at, you know, 22 to, uh, you know, if you look at what's been signed recently with Bernardo Silva and um, Jesus and uh, Leroy Sane, we're looking at young players. He said, it doesn't mean we can't um, go out and buy uh, a more experienced and older player who's 26 or 28 years old, who's more yeah. towards the finished article, but still hasn't reached their peak. Like Mares, I think Mares is was it 26, 27 when we bought him. So the idea yeah. is we're buying young players who've got a lot of potential ahead of them. And and Calvin yeah. talked about the the values and said, um, you know, we are buying players that people might think was oh, it's, you know, it's it's expensive, and then within two or three seasons their values have multiplied by so much that it actually they look quite cheap. And you look at yeah. Sterling now, Sterling, I don't think. Anybody could deny that he's worth well over a hundred million pounds, you know. Yeah. So, you know, Bernardo Silva, I think you'd argue as well that he's worth, you know, he's he cost us forty three million. He's probably worth double that now. So, since you've been doing it right, they, like you said, they've been, they've identified the targets that fit in the system. They've looked at the personalities, and that's why the Sanchez and the Fred deals certainly fell by the wayside with because they were after the money, and. Um, it's why Pep doesn't go back yeah. in after somebody who's refused them, apart from Emery yeah. Laporte, who had a valid reason because he was injured. So it it it, it does it, it encapsulate the, the the strategy and the plan and the system that City have got in place for their um, yeah. transfer targets. Well, well, Caldoun actually in his interview he turned around on that point. He says we have we have a system. 
we plan early there's no surprises Cons yeah. we have consistency so we scout early with cheeky pep and ferran and um, before the season is over we know who our targets are before the season's even finished so yeah that sort of goes with what you said in your, your, that tweet and then you went on to say in another tweet look at how they fix mistakes they had made themselves by reviewing their strategy and adapting it look at how they keep specific leaders in their squad even if those guys aren't playing much anymore look at how management relates with the manager and his teams etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think that was what caldoon said in the interview last night part one of the interview he said you see the correlation of good planning you know you see that yeah. that's not just been this season but this has been years in the making and we, and we we have seen yeah. Six trophies in two seasons is all the correlation of everything you said about planning, uh, no surprises, consistency in recruitment and identification of players. Um, yeah. you then, your next couple of paragraphs are quite interesting uh, tweets because you said a lot of answers are right there in the Centurion documentary. They gave so much information out cheap and people are too salty to go there and pick up lessons. They've done the hard work. The easy part is to copy, but no, the reaction is to bash, cry that they bought success. Um, hell, you can watch one interview with Khaldun and pick up invaluable insights about what they're doing and how they plan. It's all out there. They bought success. These guys spent £187 million in one window and finished fourth under Pellegrini. Then they spent £192 million and finished third under Pep. And that, I think, leads back to what Ray says about the fact with the recruitment process and he's yeah. in his, his, his interview last night that they are now reviewing contracts of players after one season. The likes yeah. of Bernardo Silva. And he said, and they asked why, and he said, because they deserve it. They played that well that we think they've got a four-year contract after the first season, we'll offer them another extended contract because they they deserve it. So I thought that was quite interesting, certainly when you mentioned about the Centurion documentary. Um, yeah. All the clues were there. Why did you say that? Well, I, I watched the documentary and I was very, very, very um, impressed by what I saw behind the scenes. I think what the, the, the one that really struck me was when Mendy got injured and they had this meeting with the team to decide what they wanted to do about it. Do we get someone new in January? Do we proceed with the season? And for me, the fact that they even had that meeting and you know with the, the kind of people that were in that meeting from pep to shiki and all of that and, and i found it very 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 interesting because i don't think many clubs i don't think many clubs do that i think okay someone got injured okay um maybe two people just decide but this this was a more inclusive meeting where they sat together and said okay what do we do about this problem and i think that is already an insight into how they handle problems at Manchester City. When it, I, I imagine that they did that with Bravo when they had that struggle first season and they sat down and said, okay, how do we fix the problem? Because we find a goalkeeper, you know, who can use his feet and distribute the ball and he hasn't really worked out well because even the distribution he came for, he wasn't doing it very well. He was one of the worst in distribution that season and every shot on, on target was going in so they went they sat down and they reviewed and one thing also was i mean th there's something people always say people keep saying oh look at how manchester city gave um pep more money to buy a goalkeeper after his first goalkeeper flopped but they didn't look at the bigger picture which was that manchester city had cause to believe in what pep was doing because of how he was applying it on the field even though you know there were bad days like the four zero defeat at everton and the four two at leicester Everyone could see what Pep was trying to do. And the management believed in that, in that philosophy that he wanted to go with. So, of course, it was easy for them to say, okay, this guy hasn't worked, but it's still a good plan. So let's get someone else to fill in that role. But that's something that people don't really look at. Another thing I want to say is, I, I, watch, I, I love watching Kaldun interviews 
Kaudun is absolutely brilliant. I am a big fan of the way he, he articulates his points and his ideas as well. There was one particular interview I watched where he was talking about in-game situations. I think he was talking about the game at Anfield where um, he lost 3-0. And some of that game, he was very specific. He could remember specific moments from games. He could remember what he said to Pep, you know, after the game and things like that. And I found it very interesting because another thing that, you know, Manchester City have in their favour is that Kaboon is genuinely interested in the football. He's genuinely interested in the players. He's interested in the football. You can't compare that with maybe Marina from Chelsea or um, Woodward from Manchester United, those guys are not real football guys, so there's also a problem there. But in Manchester City, all the way to Kaldun, there's an interest in the football, in the welfare, in how things go on the field. I was really, really stunned that he could remember specific incidents from games. He, 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 would, he would just casually mention, oh, back in 2011, we had this, this, this um, game where so, this and this happened, and I was very stunned. Uh, I was surprised. Like, how how does he even remember this stuff? But I think that's that's I what think, I think. It, it, I think it shows the communication between yes. Caldun, Ferran, Cheeky, and Pep or Pellegrini yes. or the managers that they talk. They talk all yes. the time. Which something that I think you know, and I'm not just isolating Man United here, but I think the Woodwoods and the Mourinho's and and you know, I I think there's a disconnect between there, and I think yes. that's the problem where they 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 all think they're one big team. The manager, you know, board of directors and the chairman are, are one big team, constantly yeah. talking to each other all of the time. Right? I think one, yeah. one thing with with um, with Khaldun, and I think, like you said, you both of you guys have said, he, he he's so different to everybody else, but he actually can have a very very big influence. I think after the, we got knocked out by Liverpool in the Champions League last season, he, you know, the team were down, and Pep was down, yeah. everybody was down. And he came into the dressing room and said, he said to Pep, you know, whatever's gone, but go out. We're going to win the league. Yeah, we were going to win the league anyway. Go out and break as many records as you can. He said, go out. And he, and he said, I think that gave them renewed motivation and belief yeah. to carry on. Because we could have just said that season's over. We were out of the FA Cup. We were going to win the league. We can just let it flop to the end. But that gave him that renewed motivation. And so that's the impact that Khaldun has on that dressing room. And he says, he talks to Pep, yeah. talks to the team. So he's really integral to the whole setup. And as you guys said, he's not disconnected. And you can see the players and the management respect him a lot. And I don't think other clubs have that system in place where the players are respecting the chairman and understand yeah. knowledge uh, the way we have at City. Well, just, yeah. moving, just moving on to your last couple of tweets you made, you said, the second to last one which I pulled up, you said, instead of asking yourself how they turn things around for those failures, you're focusing on the money. The money was being spent before sustained success came. They were just not doing everything else well, so it was ineffective, which is the problem of a lot of your clubs. And I think you put that in capital letters being the clubs of people who are complaining about Manchester City's model. Yeah. And I think last night, if you go back and watch the interview, Caldoun said something very similar where he turned around and says, you know, basically, and I, I'm only paraphrasing what he said, but it was something along the lines of, um, don't blame us for your inconsistencies um, and your lack yeah. of. And I yeah. think that was a key point, <clears throat> basically saying, you concentrate on your own club and don't blame us for your failures. They're not our problems. Uh, we've yeah. addressed, like you said, we've addressed our problems and we do address them. And there'll be more problems in the future that will need addressing without a shadow of a doubt. So you, your last one says, see, there is so much to learn and pick up about Man City. You're better off trying to learn about how they did things rather than being salty and crying about money. Everyone has money in the Premier League and the top teams spend a shitload of money. Football has always been about it. Um, so yeah. it's interesting because people do focus on the money. And one last thing I want to say before I give you the last words before we wrap up is um, what came out of the, the, again, the Caldoun interview last night, which I thought was interesting, is when he talks about when Yaya Torre signed 
Um, and he went straight to Yaya and uh, he said, I wanted to know immediately about Barcelona and what is happening at Barcelona, what makes Barcelona ha what they are now at that time when Yaya signed and about Pep. And Yaya said to him, they play, their mindset is they play every yeah, yeah, yeah. single game to win. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's a friendly, um, if it's a cup match, a Carabao cup match, or the players programmed, they win every single match and it becomes this mindset and mentality. And he said that was the biggest turning point for me where we didn't have that mindset at the time. And that's what we had yeah. to focus to. So um, what were your final thoughts, just on reading that to you two, what were your final thoughts thinking about you know, what the influence Cal Dune is also having on, on the club? Sorry. Well, um, yeah, I think that he's been absolutely fantastic, especially in the past few years. I think he has he has learned um, during the journey to this point. I think when he he started, he had he probably had ideas about how to do things, but along the way, he was willing to learn and look at other models and look at other teams and what they were doing, other successful teams and what they were doing in order to be able to emulate what they were doing and even do better than them. So over the years, he has evolved. He has, he has gotten better at what he does. And I think at this point, he's probably top three in the world or top two for, you know, for him because of the way he does things. But I think Master State are benefiting a lot from him. Of course, it's great to have Kep. It's great to have all those all those players. If you don't have you know that kind of leadership at the top, it's going to affect every single thing. It doesn't matter what manager you have. There's a reason why Pep Guardiola did not go to Chelsea. He probably looked at you know the way they were doing things and thought, nah, I don't want to be in this kind of place. I mean, I remember when um, Bayern got him at the time, they had to you know make him see their vision and see how it aligned with theirs, uh, with his. And I imagine that um, Kautun also did the same with Pep when he approached him. And, you know, it was very um, important for him to get Shiki on board before Pep even came. And, you know, there was something I, I mentioned about the, um, the average age of the sport. You know, at first Pep came, the average age was about, I did a thread on it one time, the average age was about, um, 29 or something. I think they had about 17 plus 28 and over in their squad. But within one window, after the 16, 17 season, when they realized that this was not sustainable, this this it wasn't going to bring any success. Having four fullbacks over 30 and all that, they went back and reviewed that and came back. And in one window, they got rid of four fullbacks. They got rid of. I mean, that the average age I think it dropped to about 24. After that, so um, and I believe that for that kind of thing to happen, you need someone like Kaldun on board. You need him to be seeing the vision and to be understanding what is happening on the field. You know, for him to buy into that because it was a lot to spend that kind of money. Yeah. Here. Well, I I don't think Pep would have come if Cheeky and Ferran weren't there. Um, yeah. And the, but Ferran especially is a visionary. Uh, in terms of uh, bringing money in, and you can see the City Football Group that Barcelona they turned that down that idea, and yeah. Calhoun at City give him that scope and that freedom to develop that idea. Calhoun, yeah. if he believes in what you're doing, he'll give you the full backing. That's m my yeah. firm. He, he he feels confident. That's why we could go out and after Bravo, we could go out and get um, yeah, Edison. Edison, uh, and yeah. after one season. We say to Edison, well, Edison, you know, you're doing so well. We're going to give you a six-year contract uh, straight yeah. away. More money. You know, we, we want to tie you down. You can see so many positive things you, they, they're doing. And there's one point, I'm, and I, I, I'm trying to stand back and look at what the other clubs in the top six are doing and who are the closest to City in getting a good structure together with the right sort of people. And whether you like them or not, I'd say probably the nearest are Liverpool because they've yes. got Klopp in, they've backed him. Um, he's been there now, was it four and a half years? Three and a half, four yeah. and a half years? They've given him the money. They believe in him and you can see their improvement. You know, okay, you can argue they're only fourth in the league last season, but they got to the Champions League final. 
Um, and I think partly they were, they were forced yeah. to focus on the Champions League. This season, they've pushed us all the way. They spent yeah. a lot of money. and They couldn't have done it without spending that money, but they believed in him and they backed him. And then the Champions League final again. The next one down the line, I'd say it's Pochettino at Spurs because they've got... Daniel Levy's been there for years. He knows what he's doing. They got yeah, Joel yeah. Lewis, the owner. So they've got a good structure. They're not doing as well as City, obviously. And then you look down and you look at United, who are in despair, in disarray, with Woodward, who doesn't know what he's doing, spending shed loads of money on people like Pogba, where they paid the agent so much. And, you know, they spent about £115 million on Pogba, who doesn't fit in. He's the wrong personality. Uh, for your club and you've got people like Chelsea who are just firing the managers every season and we hear that Sarri's probably going and in fact I can see those two clubs struggling and maybe Arsenal who are now getting a better structure together yeah, with yeah. Uh, with uh, Unai Emery they could be the you know they could these could be the next top four and Wolves have got once again they've got a very good yeah, structure yeah. so it's going to be the teams by the looks of things who have got those really solid structures where the chairman and the owners uh, uh, understand and believe in the club and back the manager yeah. because they believe in him. And those are the ones that are going to go forward. And you're right, said when yeah, you say, yeah, yeah. who's going to challenge Man City? You know, nobody, I except Liverpool, I think, next season, maybe Spurs, but City are at a level where we're not going to fall away. This, And you could see after last season, the other two times we won the league, uh, the, the, the Premier League, we did drop off. You know, we as fans thought we could just carry on, but you, we look back now in hindsight, and we can see the a lot of the mistakes we made. And now we, we're not making those mistakes. We're here for yeah. the long run. So, guys, Zeri, I want to say a massive thank you for coming on Man City Fan TV. Uh, it's been a pleasure um, um, having you on and uh, having a chat with you about that fascinating tweet that you uh, that you sent um for those who are watching um where can they follow you on twitter what's your twitter handle um it's actually xy cerebrone but um what happened was i lost my former account so um it got suspended i think i I, tweet, I posted a video from la liga and it was just a short three second video to highlight something and i got suspended but i just got my account back so now I have two accounts. <laughs> okay. There's Cerebrone and then there's XY Cerebrone. So they can but, follow the other. One. But the one, the, the one where the tweet came. I'll be more active there. Yeah. The one where the tweet came from is XY Cerebrone. XY Cerebrone. Okay. XY Cerebrone. We've got this. Uh, I'm just bringing it up on my phone because I've got. Um, I'll just uh, pull this up just so people know. Yeah, so it's at, and then it's lowercase xy, uh, capital C, and then it's E-R-E-B-R-O-N-E. -E. Um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you'll be able to follow. We'll put a link to that below in the description. But listen, I want to say a massive thank you for coming on Man City Fan TV. Um, it's thank been really me. It's been really interesting talking to you, and certainly because... People post these things on Twitter, uh, and it's quite easy to just look at them and think, oh, it's just another City fan, you know, blah, blah, blah. But actually, one, you're not from this country. Two, you don't support Manchester City. Um, and yeah. follow football. I've, I've looked at your Twitter account. You follow football in general, not just all about Valencia. You've, you talk about lots of different clubs. So it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, uh, brilliant! And we'll have you. We'll have you on again next time something obviously happens. Right. Yeah, uh, we've got the summer to go through before the season starts next year, so maybe we'll have you on again. Right, maybe, that'll be fantastic. Yeah, do a preview on some of the signings and things like that right. eventually. But anyway, Ray, thanks a lot, mate. Thank you. This I'd love to do that. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Take care. This is Andy from Man City Fan TV. So thank you. Yes. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> don't forget subscribe click notification uh and comment below this video uh, what do you think of seri and his comments and uh, his tweets and don't forget go and give him a follow but anyway take care and we'll see you soon